Thank you for tuning in to Exposure TV. I'm your host, DV DJ Rain, with my co-host Eclipse. We're here today to talk to Silas, aka The Nasty Show, which is a DJ around town that's done a lot more things in the nightclub. So we're going to be right back and kind of find out just exactly what he has going on for the city and for the entertainment of others. <laughs> Welcome back to Exposure TV. I'm your host, DV DJ Rain, with my co-host, Eclipse, and our guest today, Silas, a.k.a. The Nasty Show. Silas, how are you doing today? What's going on, Rain, man? How you doing? I'm great, man. I'd like to thank y'all for having me on the show. Good. But I know you, and you know me, um, but a lot of people don't in the city. So let, let's tell them exactly who you are, how you, how you got into DJing, and what was, what was your purpose? Man, I started DJing probably about six years ago, seven maybe. Uh, my sister's boyfriend was a disc jockey. He gave me my first set of equipment. He just gave it to me. So mm -hmm. for somebody to just give you something that costs a whole lot of money, it just gives you a set of confidence like, you know, this is something you're supposed to do. So right. uh, my first set of equipment was a, a Teak front load CD player. Mm -hmm. So. <laughs> You know, queuing them up on uh, fast forward, and I had a four channel Radio Shack mixer. It wasn't anything fancy like we have now. Mm -hmm. You know, you graduated to the Technique 1200s and the fancy rain mixers and such. Uh, I really took off when I got to college and met uh, my business partner, George Chuck. Mm -hmm. He's also a DJ, you know. Um, he had a company called Yard Boy Entertainment at the time, okay. based off uh, the yard, being a college DJ, coming right. up on the yard, mm -hmm. you know. So uh, I got into him with that. I, I met him, I was like, you know, I DJ uh, the first week of school. He came out, was like, we were looking for DJs. And uh, the next week he put me on a gig, he just left the room. <laughs> 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 so, you know, that's how it really started for me. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> Tell me about uh, tell me about your Jack Daniels sponsorship. Uh, Jack Daniels really came along with uh, these guys, Nero De Niro, Next Level Entertainment. Um, I started DJing for them back when Magoo's was Mardi Gras. Mm -hmm. This is like 2007 ish, mm -hmm. and uh, I was filling in for a guy who wasn't doing a very good job, and I just. George Chuck was hype man for him. Came over here like, man, come get your stuff, man. Come up here and DJ. So came up there and DJ one night. I rocked the party. They brought me back. And just from there on, they kept calling me to do stuff. And that's just how it started. Uh, I've done mixtapes for them. Uh, the last one I did was uh, something for the honeys, promoting a new uh, brand they had, the, the Jack Daniels Honey, Tennessee Honey. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a lot of ads. You can check out jacksonincrowd.com. There's a lot of things on there for as far as Jack Daniels and me and the mm -hmm. other Jack Daniels DJs, such as Joe Nasty, which was a person I've seen on your show. Uh, let me ask you this. Um, the Nasty Show. Like, I got to ask. Like, <laughs> what is it? Like, 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 yeah, where did it come from? Let's keep it PG-13 now for the viewers. Now. Nasty Show... <laughs> My original name was DJ Get Nasty with it. Uh, I remember that. It came from, uh, you know, I started DJing in high school, man. You know, Nasty was where, like, oh, man, he real nasty on the turntable. So mm -hmm. that's kind of really where it came from when I got to college. Uh, the guy who actually honed my DJing skills, uh, DJ Shifty Show, he's uh, gone off. He's in the Army now, but uh, he taught me how to mix on turntables, took me back to vinyl. And that's how I learned how to mix and uh, 
we always DJ together. We always tag team parties. So mm -hmm. I was DJ get nasty with it. He was uh DJ Shifty show. So when we got together it was just a nasty show. Mm -hmm. And since he moved on I've kinda kept the name going, you know, the nasty show and uh my segment that on ninety seven seven I have a mix show that airs every Saturday night at ten PM. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's just the nasty show with the jump off party mix on Saturday nights. Nice. So what so what genre of music do you uh, WRBJ 97.7, more a hip-hop R&B station, mm -hmm. but as far as the mix shows, they get DJs total control over, you know, what we play, and, nice. uh, you know, I'm known for playing all type of genres, I'm an open format DJ, so, uh, I do a lot of mashing records together, mm -hmm. it's kind of uh, another nickname I have, the Mississippi Mashup King. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I might play this instrumental of a rock record and throw a hip hop acapella over it. And I just try to bring new things to the table, man. Right. Because if people are going to listen to the radio, they got all those other hours of the day where it's regular radio programming. What's the mm, use right. of me DJing the same song they've heard all day? Right, I want to give them something that's, that's going to definitely stand out and stick with them. Right. So when people see me out, they're like, man, you that dude, they be always playing that weird stuff. <laughs> <laughs> that, that weird stuff. Now, that's just the stuff that help you keep moving. Right. Yeah. Because uh, a lot of bigger markets, man, uh, you know, DJing is a, there's a lot of work and uh, a lot of bigger markets. You just can't play radio mm -hmm. music in the club. Right. A lot of bigger markets, people, people here really don't dance in the club, but... I've DJ places where that 120 BPM is all night. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I, I have a buddy of mine that's that standard about pretty much about 120 and above is where they stay. And I mean, and they pack. You know, that's just a bigger market. And that's you know, that's the musical taste of that area of the of the country that in that market. Yeah, it just fist pumping all over the place. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. And that's yeah, one of the real reasons I became a DJ. Uh, was to make people move, you know, man, have, make them have a good time, so. Mm -hmm. Right. We have very pure intentions. <laughs> and so with, with the, with the Nasty Show, um, and then you, you know, you being partnered up with Yard Boy Entertainment, tell me about the, uh, Mixer Dot DJ. Mixer Dot DJs came about, uh, one night, uh, one of the other co-founders, which is DJ Unpredictable, uh, he had this party at Free Lines. And uh, George Chuck made this T-shirt that said Mix or Die. So we got the T-shirts printed up, gave all the DJs who DJed the night at the club a shirt. And then after the, the next day, we sat down and kind of, you know, thought about, you know, Mix or Die. It could be an umbrella for all DJs to where, you know, at a point in time where we can grow mm -hmm. the actual company to where it needs to be. So uh, it started out with us three. We have added uh, two other DJs on. Uh, it's kind of like an umbrella for uh, setting standards. Mm -hmm. So, if you're a mix of that DJ, you know it's coming with uh, this set of standards. Your party is gonna be okay on the party side and the business side. Right. We have a booking manager. Her name is Cherie Dean. She does a very good job mm -hmm. of keeping all of us abreast on dates we need, where we need to be, when we need to be there, and uh, it's just. A growing business we're trying to start here in Jackson and maybe grow out mm -hmm. later on. Okay, so now when you're talking about the Mixer Die DJs and um, being an umbrella um, for the other businesses, what what exactly? Well, an uh, umbrella for the other DJs by, uh, say if you're a new DJ coming on, you know, as DJs we all like to get our fair share, you know, some other people don't. Mm -hmm. charge as much as other people so it's a mix of that DJ you come under that umbrella because you're a mix of that DJ you're gonna get what everybody else in the company get. there's no uh, I'm not I'm new at this uh, mm -hmm. so I'm not gonna charge as much as he charges the right, DJ. right. so he keeps that keeps that that money right love one even and I mean, uh, well, that's a big problem right yeah big that, problem that could be a big problem in the city but uh, you know, if you're a DJ out there, man, you got equipment you got to pay for. You got time you put in as mm -hmm. you're standing up at these people's events, right. uh, weddings, uh, parties, such for picnics, especially outside in the summer hot. You got to get paid for what you're worth, man. Yeah, I mean, you know, not just us, but I mean, I, you know, I mean, a lot of people that I think sacrifice their time 
uh, to for the entertainment of others. You know, I think a lot of them were just underappreciated for what yeah, they especially did. like Definitely. on days like holidays, mm -hmm. Christmas, New Year's. I don't even know the last time I actually celebrated the New Year. Wow. Well, we're we're running low on time, but we're going to come back and we're going to talk about uh, the blast, uh, Deep Friday. You know, a bunch of other things that you have going on. It's community work. So stay tuned, and we'll be right back. For more information on the offerings of The Nasty Show, go to www.thenastyshow.com or twitter.com slash The Nasty Show. Exposure TV is sponsored and produced by Peaches of On Location TV. Exposure TV, Tuesdays, 6 p.m. and Saturdays, 6.30 a.m. on Comcast Cable, Channel 18, Pad Network. Welcome back to Exposure TV. I am your co-host Eclipse here with my man Rain, and we got the nasty show in the building right now. Now, tell me a little bit about the Blast. Now, Blast was an event that came from my idea. I'm always traveling. Uh, the guy uh, I'm doing it with, DJ Scrap Dirty. Mm -hmm. He's always he's the founder of uh, you know Violator All Star DJs. Right. He kind of came from my idea out in LA called Do Over. Mm -hmm. where they have uh, just this big event where the DJs come and they spend what they want to spend. Because normally, you know, DJs is always catering to the people. Mm -hmm. and, you know, you want to get the people up and make a move. The Blast is catered toward DJs doing what they do best and doing them. So uh, we had Rain come in and DJ one. Uh, that was awesome. Fingerprint. Uh, we had our birthday party, me and Scrap's birthday parties. and. Is in our birthdays in May, rather, and uh, we had Big Crick come down and do a performance. Mm -hmm. uh, that was a great show. We had a great turnout for that. And uh, the blast is run from April to August. It's mm -hmm. kind of like a summertime outside event where you know you can come hang out, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and listen to great DJs do what they do. Right. And it's different genres of music. It's really to expose people to things they don't hear on a daily basis. So. You might have one DJ playing house, one DJ playing dubstep, mm -hmm. another DJ doing underground hip hop, just different things like that. So that sounds like a great way to be real proactive about really, you know, putting a lot of people into some some different genres and and, and really just you know right. getting that new music out there, which helps everybody. It helps the people, um, you know, get exposed to something new. It helps those artists that are getting exposed. So it it sounds like something great. Yeah, we had a really good turnout for all of them. Uh, we had Bix crowd. It was held at the uh, the what's the place? The Arts Midtown, Midtown Arts, Arts Center. Center. Okay. Uh, yeah. Hey man, it's like, been. You need directions to the <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'll give you a ride if you need one. Yeah, the Midtown Arts Center uh, over there in the courtyard outside. So it's just you know we don't have any festivals anymore here. Uh, we don't have Jubilee Jam, so it's just yeah. something. You know, if nobody's giving to you, somebody has to do it. Right. Mm -hmm. Absolutely right. I feel you 100. Now, what about this Deep Friday I've been hearing about? What y'all got going on at Deep Friday? You know, Deep Friday really focused on house music. And house music to me is the best music of all because it has that beat that drives the mm -hmm. people to get up and dance. Uh -huh. So, you know, you're sitting there listening to it. You got that constant, you know, you're going to bob your head or something. You just can't sit there yeah. and be dormant on it. Right, 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 right. Sounds very exciting. Now, another uh, event that you have some involvement with is Mississippi Greek Week. Got to tell us about that. Yes, Mississippi Greek Weekend is uh, hopefully the next big thing for uh, Jackson. Like I said, we don't have any festivals here like we used to anymore, like Jubilee Jam. Mm -hmm. And that was like one of my favorite festivals. Where they brought in artists and, you know, they allowed the DJs to DJ. And uh, Mississippi, Greek in, w Mississippi Greek Weekend was uh, an idea my... Uh, business partner George Chuck had, you know, mm -hmm. he's a member of Omega Psi Phi Fraternity Incorporated. Uh and he was like Hattiesburg has, you know, Q Delta, yes, Texas oh, yeah. Greek Peak Picnic, you know, you got Atlanta Greek Picnic. We the capital city in Mississippi and, you know, there's nothing here. So that's kinda where it derived from. Mm -hmm. 
And uh, this past year was the fourth year for us, so this upcoming year will be the fifth year. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a, grown a very big committee for it. Uh, last year we had the best turnout out of all four years. It's getting bigger every year. Uh, it's gaining more support from out of town. We had people from Atlanta. We had people from New Jersey come down. Wow. Uh, people from Texas. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's not only for Greeks, because I'm not Greek. Right. Uh, it's for, you know, non-Greek individuals. It's just really something to come hang out, socialize. Mm -hmm. uh, we had a, a local artist performance at the Block Jam, mm -hmm. which is uh, one of the events that we have every year. Mm -hmm. uh, so it consists of Thursday through Sunday. Uh, Thursday, we'll have a wine tasting for the sponsors. Uh, Sponsors uh, from last year range from downtown Jackson Partners to uh, you know Jack Daniels. Mm -hmm. We've had uh, the Wine Colony Market sponsor the wine for the wine tasting. Right. And the other side of Mississippi Greek Weekend is not just about the partying. We also do community service. Mm -hmm. We partner with the uh, Lymphoma and Leukemia Society, which is the Light the Night Walk that happens at Trustmark Park. Uh -huh. And uh, Dave, uh, they're a great sponsor of both ways. We sponsor them, they sponsor us. Mm -hmm. And uh, we get a team to go out there and walk uh, in the actual walk that they have at Trustmark Park. And uh, we get a team, there's an online donation mm -hmm. for uh, raising money for their society. So, right. And that's the, uh, their, their, their cause is uh, lymphoma and uh, leukemia. Right, right, right. And, uh, um, so like I said, it's Thursday through Sunday, Thursday wine tasting. Mm -hmm. There's usually a you know welcome to Jackson party or something of that nature. Friday night it was the block jam. This is the current schedule from last year. Mm -hmm. uh, Saturday night we have something called the symposium, mm -hmm. which uh, we're trying to keep the name of the events Greek like. And so that's like uh, you come in. We had it at the train station last year. It's kind of you know, upscale, you know, you put on some good clothes, come out, right. live band. And get spiffy. Right. <laughs> some, good, some good clothes? What are so, you know, on? put on your your cuff links and your shirt and tie, you know what I'm saying? Didn't you hear me say spiffy? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to no, terminate turn, turn Terminate good clothes, <laughs> you know. And uh, Sunday we get up and go to church, and then uh, past years we have had a picnic. We didn't have a picnic on Sunday last year, but... Mm. That's about what it consists of. It's usually in September. You can go to the website, check it out at uh, MississippiGreekWeekend.com. Okay. And uh, there's everything on there. And you can also go to JacksonNCrowd.com and then click on the Mississippi Greek Weekend link. Is that, do you, um, do you have any insight on like when tickets might go on sale for it? Or uh, it'll probably it? be around August. Uh, the committee is going to start meeting next month to get the schedule together and get the events together for this year. Uh, it's a long, it's a lot of hard work. We, I like to give a shout out to the committee because they do it all mm -hmm. for free. And uh, we I'm just all get together and have a good time, man. Just I bet the city of Jackson enjoys it too. I mean, from, because I hear about it all the time. Mm -hmm. Like every year, the past four years, I mean, I've heard a lot about it in the streets. So I know that the public themselves enjoy it so you know shout out to all of y'all you know just for bringing it and starting something out of nothing in the city that's actually grown like i think i had a number one time that's like around three thousand people at one one year that was probably the past year past year so uh we're hoping for it to grow you know to be biggest q delta and texas greek pig dick and all that uh we've done a lot of grassroots marketing like where we've actually went to Texas Greek Picnic, thrown out flyers, mm -hmm. Atlanta Greek Picnic, put out flyers. We probably put out at least 25,000 flyers last year. Oh, that's we're, great, man. It we're running good. out of time. Sorry about that. Okay. Um, we're going to be right back. We're going to talk about some of the charities, community work that Mixer Die DJs do, that you do. Uh, so make sure you stay tuned, and we'll be right back. Exposure TV, Tuesdays, 6 p.m. and Saturdays, 6.30 a.m. on Podcast Cable, Channel 18, Pet Network. For more information on the offerings of The Master Show, go to www.thenastyshow.com 
or twitter.com slash the nasty show. Exposure TV is sponsored and produced by Peaches of On Location TV. Welcome back to Exposure TV. We're still here with my man, The Nasty Show, and we was just about to get into what you got going on at Sweet 106. Okay, uh, Sweet 106 uh, was an idea that came about by guy named Jason Thompson, mm -hmm. also known as Pi Infamous. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you know him. He's a, He's a rapper. Well, yeah, I, I a rapper. I heard of Pi Infamous. He's nice. He's yeah. Nice. So uh, him, his brothers, and then, of course, my business partner, George Chuck, we all rolled up the sleeves and uh, put into this little building down on Terry Road, which mm -hmm. is off of uh, Wilmington is the actual street. is on 106 Wilmington Street is the actual address. And uh, Sweet 106 was kind of like an alternative to the club life. You don't want to be in the club. Right. You know, you come, you got low lighting. We do uh, poetry, spoken word. Uh, there's live bands on different nights. Well, we do a hip hop show every second Saturday mm -hmm. of the month called Back to Basics. Mm -hmm. uh, so I don't know if we need to get you on there. Yes, you do. Yes, you do, sir. <laughs> so uh, I make sure I talk to him about that. But uh, it's just somewhere where you can come. If you don't want to be in a normal club, you can come. You're too know, older to fight and throw chairs. And right. Kick security. I understand. For the older crowd. So, <laughs> you know, you can come hang out. Uh, there's seating available. Uh, no hard liquor. We only do, you know, beer and wine. So. Mm -hmm. It's an upscale atmosphere. Sounds like a good, uh, good environment for couples to come and just lounge and yeah, chill out Yeah, it, it is, especially uh, the Nameless uh, Poetry Night mm -hmm. is one of the biggest nights we have. That's on Saturday, uh, so you can come out. If you, you know, some people write at home and they've never had anywhere to perform. They can get up and, you know, have an audience to perform in front of as far as their spoken word, their poetry. Right. Or say if you're a rapper and you just want to read some of your lyrics, mm -hmm. you can come and do that. Real relaxed, uh, chill environment. Something. It, it sounds really comfortable. Just just you talking about it, I'm all relaxed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all so relaxed. Like, you have a DJ behind, you know, the poet. And uh, like I said, we do the hip-hop shows on the second Saturday, and then we have live bands. Uh, Kerry Thomas, he's an acoustic guitarist. He's there on the regular. Mm -hmm. We have uh, myself, I go in and DJ, George Chuck goes in and DJ, and uh, it's also open for, you know, people who want to rent it out for birthdays. We have several birthday parties there, mm -hmm. and uh, it's real easy to find. It's right off of Terry Road, on the north exit, which I think they renamed out of University Boulevard or something. Mm -hmm. Did they really? Yeah. Hmm. There's a sign up there that says University Boulevard, but it's 106 Wilmington Street is the address, and just a real cool place to come hang out, you know, if you don't want to be around a whole bunch of people right. jumping around and acting a fool. So, <clears throat> this is one subject I like to touch on, because I've, I've done a lot of the work myself, um, doing my own avenues, but tell me about some of the, like, the charities and the uh, community work that you, Mix or Die DJs, your boy entertainment as a whole, individually, I've done uh, man, this is, I, I do a lot of community work for all of those organizations. Uh, you know, I graduated from Tougaloo, and going to Tougaloo community is a big thing there. Mm -hmm. uh, being rooted in the community from, you know, what happened with the Civil Rights Movement to us being active in the community now. And uh, that's where actually Yard Boy uh, prides itself on, you know, we do a lot of school events for uh, elementary school, middle schools. Um, I actually have done, you've heard of rat reject all tobacco. Mm -hmm. I've traveled with the Generation Free, which is the older version of rat. Mm -hmm. For uh, We've gone out to Friday, Friday night football games, high school all over the state. And I've DJed for them doing uh, anti-tobacco campaigns for high schools. Um, what else? There's been uh, different, different little 
we work with the Children's Defense Fund, mm -hmm. you know, straight out of Washington. Me and George Chuck have been to the actual Haley Farm mm -hmm. where they have a lot of the conferences and things like that. So they have a big conference down here every summer that we always do the audio visual for and then we DJ for them if they have the kids have a party. There's a women's institute that they have every summer at Tougaloo. Mm -hmm. We work with them on that and uh, we do workshops. George Chuck, we speak. Uh, George Chuck does a presentation about uh, uh, Barack and 50 Cent and the comparisons and mm -hmm. it's a real interesting thing and uh, you always want to be a part of kids lives because they're the next generation well, that right. come up. Touch on like I want to hear like that comparison. I'm like, gonna you need, like a little bit. Like, of I'm gonna have to let him like do that. And, and I'm gonna have to let uh, him do that presentation for you. Okay. Uh, you can have him on the show. <laughs> okay, that's two very influential people in, but, in, in, in different ways. So that that would be an interesting debate. To yeah, see. how about I, I want to see the difference. I mean the <laughs> similarities. Yeah, the next time we're doing Rain and Eminem, I, I <laughs> Ron Paul and DV DJ Rain. <laughs> yeah. So uh, uh, other community events. Uh, I've done would be Ice Cream Sunday, which is the event that uh, Jason Thompson from mm -hmm. the Block Marketing, you know, the partner Suite 106. Mm -hmm. uh, we've partnered with the Children Defense Fund on that. Also, we have it at the Quantania Coffee House mm -hmm. back there uh, by Jackson State, and uh, we go out and pass out flyers within the community. And we have kids come there, and we have different workshops for them to do, all the way from little small kids to you know, high schoolers, teaching them about, you know, how you reach your legislator, mm -hmm. about voting, things in your community, if something's wrong, like how to contact the things like that. Right. And then, you know, we feed them some gelato ice cream after it's all done. Working with the kids, like, I think that's, like, real, real important because there's, cause there's so many out there that might be misguided or, mm -hmm. uh, you know, their home lives aren't up to par, and that's a reflect, you know, they're,